All right, welcome back. It's still Galaxy today. Away from the economy, away from business and all of that talk, uh, we have um, a yet another guest um, joining us. And uh, we'll be looking at um, governance and leadership on the segment of the show. We have um, Fela Durotoye. He is a leadership coach and nation builder and the president of Gemstone Nation Builders Foundation. Uh, many thanks for joining us on Thank Galaxy. Thank you so today. much, Justin. Morning, it's great welcome. to be with you, Uche. Thank you and so much. For it's that. great to be in the homes of uh, everyone. Compliments of the season to you. Yes. Same yeah. To you. Yeah. Mm. All right, we're looking at um, governance and um, leadership so far in 2017. What, how would you review it? What's your take on this? Well, I think that uh, if, you, if you first of all look at what, is, what essentially is governance, mm. and what, when I talk about governance, I think in my opinion, it's like the word quality. It mm. is intended by its nature to be a positive, good thing. So, mm. so it, governance can also be used as good governance. Good governance Did okay. we get good governance mm. in 2019 or 2017? I believe that that we did to some dimensions of okay. what exactly it was that um, the current administration has been dealt. Mm. Um, we, we sometimes forget that Nigeria was on the brink of bankruptcy, mm. that Nigeria literally had been run on almost 16 years mm. of institutionalized corruption, mm. and, uh, and that this, this particular administration came in um, at a point in time when the, then the country was hemorrhaging. Um, mm. That said, I think that in the end, the essence of governance is to see how to put in place policies that encourage um, people to dream, to mm. try, dare to, to dare, and then to be able to to strive to mm. do great things. So well, that so that that that's mm. if you judge governance by that, mm. the ability to provide security, the ability to be able to create an enabling environment, then we do have a few things to talk about because. When it comes to security, on one hand, you hear good news about whether mm. Boko Haram, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, you hear the SARS kind of mayhem that has, that mm. has hit the society. Mm -hmm. Do people feel more secure today? Mm. I think people are more scared of the police than they are of, of the terrorists. You know? And so in one way, you, you would see that there has been some progress, mm. but there is so much that can be done in terms of providing governance for the people. Speaking of providing governance for the people, uh, looking at 2017, uh, when, our, when our guest just left now, we talked about um, a lot of people are still suffering in, in terms of um, providing basic needs, some um, food, you Absolutely. know, salaries are not being paid. And uh, a whole lot of Nigerians, when you talk about governance, like um, there's no governance and the, the, uh, the leadership of this country doesn't really think or even bother about what goes down there at the grassroots. Again, again like I must say to you, I think that where this place, where this, where this administration is, mm. would have been tough for any administration. Okay. It's almost like the same kind of situation where an, an Obama took place, uh, took over from a sinking United States economy. The economy of Nigeria was in the doldrums. Mm. What, what was handed over was so bad that if we didn't even have some kind of stability that comes from some kind of perceived war on, on corruption and all of that, we could have been sunk as a nation. Okay. Mm. But having said that, could we have done better? Yes, because today we need to be able to ensure that people have a few things. And this is what governance must do. Governance must create a vision that inspires the people to want to do something, mm. to want to, governance must, in, must inspire the vision to, to make people want to invest mm. in an economy. And when people invest, then there are jobs. Mm -hmm. And when there are jobs, then there's improved standard of living. When there's improved standard of living, then you can have economic growth. Because the economy is actually the combined well-being of every single person. It's mm. not just how much we produce in oil, it's how well people are able to live. Mm. And if people don't have jobs, they cannot live. They mm. cannot be, we're, we're not living, we're surviving as mm. a nation. Many people are, are barely surviving. We, we're, we're surviving on, you know, people are borrowing money and knowing that they can't, they don't even have enough, enough to pay back. They don't mm. even have a source to pay back. But the bottom line here is, is that whilst we want to completely begin to say, oh, this was the people that did this or this was the people that did this, the question is, how do we get out of here? Yeah. What is the way and the path to good governance? Because good governance essentially comes when you have good people in government. And when you talk about good people, I'm not just talking about people who are nice. or mm. but Yes, but they are people who have values. And those values are strong values, which include the fact that they must have values of integrity. They must not take what does not belong to them. They must not steal, right? We must also go that beyond values, they must have a clear vision. And what the vision does the most is it inspires people mm. to see something that excites them and says, you know what, I'm going to use my last 10,000 naira in savings to start something to key into this 
growth projector. The okay. third and the most important thing that we must have is the capacity to be able to create policies that that make things happen. Mm. That you know we talk about we talk about perennial problems like why should we always still have fuel crises in December? Mm. Is it that we didn't know December was coming? Must there be a presidential intervention or to be able to get us? Well, yeah, to do. yeah. Do you understand? Mm. Those are capacity issues. Integrity is great, but integrity is not a skill. Wonderful. And Nigerians voted for integrity, mm. and to a dimension we may have seen integrity at play, but integrity is not a skill. It doesn't speak to capacity. We need now good people at all levels of governance, mm. not just the presidency, but all the, the, exec the uh, what you call elected and appointed uh, offices. Mm. And elected is the one that chooses the appointment. But do you really think we can actually get that in this dispensation <laughs> when uh, we keep on uh, recycling, as it is, um, the same crop of leaders? Exactly. Oh, good. Yes. Uh, amazingly yes. great question. I, mm. I think that no doubt about it. That, look, we all know that Nigeria has capacity to be great. Mm -hmm. And that the reason why we have not been great to a large extent is that we have a system that cripples our potential mm. so that a few people can get their special interests protected. Rather than so, you have a, a group of people who think to themselves that we have power when other people are at a disadvantage, mm. and those people are the ones who hold your political systems. Mm. And when they hold your political systems, they know that if you if you put there somebody who's brilliant and somebody mm. who has capacity, that that person will make life better for everybody, and then the people mm. would love that person mm. and they would lose their relevance. So what they do is they usually put there somebody who cannot be elected because the person has no real vision, mm -hmm. has no real passion and no capacity. Mm -hmm. And once they put that kind of person there, that person feels like he owes the people who put him there their allegiance. Mm -hmm. He doesn't owe it to you people. So I think that until there, there are a few things that must happen. We must get a new political system and structure in place. Otherwise, we will never have good governance. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why if you have, give me a, a one minute to do so. You see, as long as the political class have this thing called selectocracy, which is the ability to decide who goes for elected office and who does not. Mm. You know, uh, Uche, no, it's not your turn. Uh, you, you know, okay, you will, you will go. Justin, you go. Uh, you are my brother. You, have, you know, as long as they have that system, the political class will forever make sure that it's the person that cannot deliver that goes, mm. so that you owe me. And then when I put you out there, the people who are intelligent enough to vote without asking for, for two naira or, 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 or 2,000 naira, those guys are not inspired by Justin. Mm. So they will not vote. Mm. Therefore, the, only the people who will be given 2,000 naira will go out to vote. Mm. Which means, Justin, you have to pay me back mm. for the money that I used mm. to get those people to go out and vote. You have to which means returns. corruption can mm. never mm. leave mm. that system. Mm -hmm. The second thing that can never leave is that I, may, I must make sure that the people who who are going to vote must never be enlightened enough mm. or, or learned enough mm -hmm. to be able to get to the point where they can earn. Because the more you learn, the more you earn. Yeah. So they must make sure that deliberately we kill education. Mm. And the last thing is that if there are people who are doing well in business, we must kill their businesses. Why? Because if, they, if their businesses rise, they have the opportunity to begin to, to fund a third alternative. Yeah. Mm. So we must make sure that whatever we are doing, we cripple businesses. We can talk about enabling business, but we can see disabling business. Mm. How many businesses today feel empowered and enabled? How many businesses can tell you that the reason why I'm doing well is because of government? Mm. Every business that is doing well today is in spite of government. Yes. It's because they've refused to give up. It's because, you know, and that structure, you have to understand, it is not an accident. Mm. Mm. Justin, Uche, listen to me. It is not an accident. It is a deliberate structure to keep power in the hands of a few people who sit down and they call themselves mm -hmm. godfathers of political parties mm -hmm. so that they can continue to be able to decide who goes and who doesn't go. Wow. Okay, so mm -hmm. I need you to understand that where we are is not an accident and the only way out is for us to get to the point where democracy is being practiced in the political parties the way it's practiced in the countries where we learned it. How do they practice it? Very simple. Every member of the party goes to the ballot box twice, the first time in the primaries and the second time in general elections. Yeah. That's how a Barack Obama was able to emerge mm. against the establishment Hillary Clinton. Mm. That's how a Donald Trump was able to emerge against the establishment Jeb Bush because the people had the power 
to choose, choose who they who their wanted. candidates were. All right. In Nigeria, we don't have that power. Okay. We are only electors. Yeah. We are not selectors. Okay, to a large extent, do you yes. think that Nigerian citizens, because I feel that um, a whole lot of us are still clouded, they're still shallow-minded, they do not know. What do you think or what would you suggest an average citizen should do at a point like this? Well, the first and most, most important thing that I would say to an average citizen, I did just literally three things, but the first one I would say is please understand that your greatest power to make a difference in your life mm. and to have a different world from the one you're currently living in is your PVC. As much as it seems like a, a tiny thing, mm -hmm. a P, your PVC is your key to the future. Mm. That door that is in front of you that cannot allow you to go from where you are into your dreams, it is the PVC that will open it. Now, I know many people say, oh, my, what, is, what PVC? And they, will, they will not. I say, look, don't matter what they do. It's what you do that matters. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is get your PVC. It is free. Every time you do not get your PVC, guess what? Somebody else who values your, their own PVC for 2,000 mm -hmm. Naira will take a decision for you. Mm -hmm. So your, your future is worth more than 2,000 Naira. So go and get your PVC. But that's not all. Get everyone you know to get their PVCs. The larger the number of enlightened voters, mm -hmm. the more the better the quality of people that the parties will float. Mm. I'm going to say that again. The larger the number of enlightened voters, mm. the more they, or the better the quality that the people, this, mm -hmm. this political parties will float. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. The second thing is go and join a party, mm -hmm. but only join a party that you have the right to vote at the primary level. I'm not asking you to be a delegate. A member, an ordinary member of the party, should be able to vote mm. at the primaries to select who you're... That way, that means the, the, the aspirants will come and speak to you and tell you what they want to do. And you will be able to choose. The third and the most important thing is you know good people. Mm. You have been speaking to some of them. Encourage them to go and run. Exactly. Encourage them. You know somebody that is good. You know somebody who has run. a good heart, mm. who will not steal. I want to take you from there. You know, um, encourage young people who are good to run. You know, this year, the not too young to run, you know, a bill was passed, you know, by the Senate, you know. Do you really think that we can have a young um, crop of leaders, of people who are passionate like you about and building the nation, you know, come 2019? Because right now, a whole lot of um, youth believe that, I mean, they've been outdoing us. Let us just sit in the background. Well, again, it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an illusion. Mm. This concept of they've been outdoing us is an illusion. We have not stepped forward, really. And, and for many of us, I think that those who stepped forward only dared to step forward within the confines of the existing political framework that I told you mm. has always disabled anyone who is really smart, mm -hmm. who is really able to do great things. So, so you know, when I mean, I, I have friends. Dio Israel, for instance, was a gentleman uh, who'd run one of the most brilliant campaigns that anybody ever saw in Nigeria this year mm. for a local government. Uh, I think it was Lagos mainland local government. Mm. In the end, they just told the gentleman, go and sit down. Regardless of all that he had done, his understanding, his engagement, I'm just giving you that as one mm. example. But again, so when you look at a Dyer Israel, or you look at a Femi George, or you look at some of the people who were brilliant, who engaged mm. the, you know, you say to yourself, is this what is going to happen to me? Ah, well, I'm not going to do this. Mm. So my question is, um, how do we get the people, the young people, to not only dare to take on the system, but then we have to go together as a movement? Mm. And I think the young people are out there. Mm. They're out there. They're listening. They're watching. And they hear you guys. Mm. And you guys are doing a great job. And you're constantly telling them what you should be and give an opportunity to people like me to come and speak to them. But also, maybe sometimes those people are going to say, maybe if somebody of credibility stands, we will all follow. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what's going to happen in 2019. Let's watch this space. Hmm. Okay, that sounds like we might have a fellow duty something in 2019. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> INEC will not allow me... Mm -hmm. or anybody who wants to follow the law mm -hmm. to make a public announcement of any aspiration that they have. Of course mm -hmm. not. So I will not be able to. I, I will have to keep you in suspense, okay. Justin yes. and Uchi. No problem. But, 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 <laughs> but, but, but watch this space. Something really amazing is going to happen in 2019. Okay. And the young people are arising. And they are not arising as one man. Mm -hmm. They are arising in, as a movement. Mm -hmm. And every single one of them are people who have credibility, who have capacity, who are going to be trained. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are already being trained to run, to know how to run, 
to know how to win, but most importantly, to know how to deliver. Mm. Because you have to understand that mm. those guys are not running for office. They are running for a new Nigeria. Mm. They are running for a new Nigeria where people are able to get work. Mm. And everybody is able to work because of a vision of a Nigeria that works. Mm. To make Nigeria work, people will have to find work. And that's the most important thing about any economy. It's not about the numbers, GDP, and, and, and those mm -hmm. things are important. Mm -hmm. They're measures. But how do we get people to find fulfilling, engaging jobs that, that leverage their talent like mm -hmm. you guys? Look, at, you were born for this. This is what you're doing. You're adding value. Everyone has the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Every human being was born with talents, with personality, and with passion. Mm -hmm. If they can find the work that uses that talent, personality, and passion, they will create an amazing value. Mm -hmm. And we well will said. grow our economy. Well said. Well, well done. Okay, just before we go, because we are almost completely out of time. You've now talked so, so, so passionately about um, how Nigeria can move forward and how the youth can actually, you know, buy into this vision. Okay, well, to that person right there who feels that, uh, I mean, life is uh, completely uh, not too good and nothing can come out of his life. He's um, there at his uh, lowest ebb and he feels there's nothing he can do to add to Nigeria. What would you say to him? I would say to that person, if he was watching me right now, who's literally given up on Nigeria and maybe yourself, I would mm. say, listen, the beautiful thing about, about life is that life doesn't give up on you even though when you give up on life. Mm. And, and, and the truth is that life prepared you ahead of your arrival in Nigeria. You were born into Nigeria to be a solution provider, to make a difference. You were born into this country loaded with the solutions you require. You, it, it wasn't you that gave yourself the solutions. It was you were divinely given. It was God who put in you what Nigeria needs at, the, at, the at time this is. time mm. yeah. to be able to make Nigeria a better country. Mm. The way it works is this. When you find that thing inside you, you are going to have to find a way to find the problem that your solution can solve. Mm. When you find it, you will, I promise you, I promise you, you will create work and you will create value. Don't just look for a job to keep body and soul together. Mm. You are more valuable than that. It wasn't me that told you. It was God that told you. If you doubt me, go and pray. And say, God, did you really make me with anything? I am telling you, yes. You were made with the things that are required to solve Nigeria's problems. So you cannot give up on Nigeria. You, Nigeria will not give up on you. But Nigeria needs you to go and begin to take the decisions that will help us to be better. What is the first most important decision you can take today, with or without work? Go to the local government office or the area that you are. Ask where is INEC registering for the PVC? Where can you get your PVC? Go there. Stand there. Whatever it takes, do it. But get your PVC. Don't go alone. Find two or three of your friends who also do not have PVC. In fact, everybody that you greet between now and December, at the end of this December, every time you say, how are you? The next thing you must ask them is, do you have PVC? Mm -hmm. And that's what is going to happen. Everybody above the age of 18 must go out. When you get that PVC, you have power and you can start to dream again. I want you to get that PVC more than anything else this year. If it wasn't for your... That is your Christmas present, belated one. That's your New Year present. That's the new <laughs> Nigeria present to you. Oh All right, you've heard it from um, Fela Adjo exactly. uh, Go get your PVC. It is your power. It is the power you need uh, to change your world, the world around you, and of course, Nigeria, you know, at large. So don't complain when people are voting because you also mm -hmm. have the right to do the same thing that exactly. they are doing. And I, so just, you have a whole lot. I can't just start reiterating everything he <laughs> said, but I um, want to say many thanks uh, for joining so us uh, today. I, I, we really just do triggered appreciate something it. in me. Yes. That, something in me is just like, I'm okay, not going to me. ask if you guys have your PVC. Of course I do. <laughs> Of course I do. <laughs> of course I do. I do the only thing is that you never get the time to go and vote because I you're know, always scared. I know, I know. <laughs> I know, but, I know, but you guys are doing a much greater job inspiring yeah. others to go mm. and vote. Your PVCs, right, are yeah. just literally are two votes. Yeah. But your mouth on this platform mm. can inspire 100,000 votes. True. So I salute you for what you're doing. Thank, thank you, you so much, much Fela. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming. We just had Fela Durotoye, leadership um, coach as well as nation builder, president, Gemstone Nation Builders. Foundation and of course a big thanks to Abiodu Shokwito, economist and former deputy director, Central Bank of Nigeria. You've heard it. Please go get your PVC. Go and get your PVC. And of course, <laughs> if there's anything I've learned today again, we should mm. look out more for what we can do and not just wait for the government. It's yes, time to move. be okay. a solutions provider, mm -hmm. meet a need, and you'll be you know you'll be so much and blessed uh, for doing that. Uh, that's our show for today. My name is Justin Akadonye.
And I'm Uche Onyekoluje. We'll do this same time again tomorrow when it's entertainment. Don't have a great day.